A very warm welcome to you from me, Jack Woodward. Youth football for you this evening. Some terrific talent on show in the Centenary Shield 2024. It's Wales under 18 schoolboys against their England counterparts. Live from the Landasi Park Academy of Sport, Neath in Wales. A big game this uh, for both countries. Wales started with a victory against Scotland. England on the back of defeat to Northern Ireland. Let's take a check on the England lineup and get to know the players a little bit better. James Taylor in goal. He's just had a great experience at Wembley meeting Jordan Pickford and Rob Green, the former England keeper. He attends Samuel Whitbread Academy, plays for Bedfordshire County Schools FA. Archie Elston is the number two, attends Thomas Telford School represents Shropshire Schools FA. Joshua Thine, the number three from Durham, known as Tyne to his teammates for obvious reasons. He's very much ready and raring to go for the action. The number four is Deacon Smalley from Merseyside, Rainhill High School, supports Manchester United and a very highly rated youngster, very much relishing playing in this one. James Sloan is one of the defenders wearing the number five, attends Sunderland College. Six foot six, the tallest player in the squad. A very imposing figure at the central defence. Into midfield and Toby Nelson wears the number seven. Chelsea fan, favourite female footballer is Alessia Russo, the Lioness, great uh, role model to have. Jude Entwistle wears the number nine from Burnley College. Burnley fan as well. Jude hoping to hit England's first goal of this year's competition, no doubts. As we run through the lineups for you, number 11, Aaron Cox. His second year in the squad, featuring mainly off the bench. Uh, last year, hoping to use his experience to lead the England attack as they try and retain the centenary shield they shared with Wales last year. Makara, McNulty, Hartner from Salford, and then Kai Adams is one of the changes, comes into the team from Thomas Telford School, a Wolves supporter. Family got him into football. And looking forward to playing at Walsall against Republic of Ireland next week. And Jack Matten also gets the nod. He's been called up to the squad following an injury 
after Joe Smart at England's training camp at St George's Park. And Jack will hope to make his mark. That is the England starting 11 before we confirm the Wales team as well and bring you all the action from the game. Let's hear from the two managers, Luke Hampton of England and Mark Lloyd-Williams of Wales. <coughs> Mark, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. A big night for you and a great start to the competition for Wales against Scotland. You'll be hoping for more of the same this evening. Yeah, uh, the lad showed you know great character uh, to come back from 2-1 down in our matchup in Scotland a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we could have won a bit more comfortably, you know, in, in the second half. We would have taken our chances, but again, you know, different opposition this evening a wounded animal, you know, after losing their first game over in Belfast. So, you know, it's always a tough fixture and uh, one we always look forward to. You have some wonderful memories of this competition. Of course, you won it a couple of years ago, shared it with England last year. So it, it's set up beautifully this evening, isn't it? What, what type of game are you expecting? Uh, obviously, be competitive, um, you know, both teams need to win you know we've seen what Northern Ireland have done in their first three games so you know um, the pressure's on both of us you know to get a result um, you know we're hoping we can get three points to take over you know six out of six going to Belfast next week and you know England uh, you know if they don't win or uh, tonight then you know they're out the competition so you know it's a massive game you know for both countries and you know one that we've prepared for um, over the last couple of days um, you know we've analysed the opposition as we normally do and you know credit to the you know the ground staff here at you know Clandarcy you know to say the game's coming here at three o'clock this afternoon after the postponement at Britain Ferry you know they've done a fantastic job. Finally it's been a tough emotional week for Welsh football so close to qualification for the Euros you'd love the lads to to put a smile on everyone's faces tonight? Yeah, you know, I watched that game on uh, on Tuesday night, you know, uh, disappointing. You know, we know how the England fans feel now. Um, but, you know, we, the lads know what they've got to do tonight. Um, you know, it's Wales v England, massive game for them in their careers. You know, they might not play against England ever again. So, you know, it's a massive achievement, uh, what they've done so far. Um, you already mentioned that we've only the last couple of years always looking to you know get that hat trick um but it's going to be tough and we will take one game at a time and you know tonight uh, is one that we are certainly looking forward to okay off you go for that final team tour best of luck this evening right we're joined by luke hampton manager of the england under 18 schoolboys. luke first of all tell us about uh, the preparations ahead of this game and how pleased you are with them yeah, we've we've um, had two days in Swansea, two, two sessions here actually, uh, and the training's been really good. The boys' application's been fantastic, um, and we couldn't really ask for more. A couple of injuries, but that's always the case um, with Shield campaigns. But that's obviously where the the squad come into it, um, and the boys coming in have got an opportunity to, you know, lay a marker down and retain the shirt for the games we've got coming up in the next few weeks. Yeah, you've made a couple of changes from the Northern Ireland game. Can you uh, give us the thinking behind those? Yeah, so Makara is coming into midfield. He's more of a natural midfielder anyway. Um, we played him at centre back in the game against Northern Ireland, and we feel that his physicality and his energy in midfield will be better for us tonight against uh, an energetic and, and often physical Welsh side. So we know that we need to match their intensity and win that battle in midfield, which we didn't feel we did in Northern Ireland. So that's the first change. Um, and unfortunately, we've lost Ollie Spicer to injury. Picked up um, an injury in between the Northern Northern Ireland game and this one, so we've we've had to replace him. That was a forced change. Um, but uh, Kai Adams comes in to start, he gives us real pace out wide and Toby Nelson will start in the 10 and hopefully we can get him on the ball more than we did um, in Belfast because that was one of our biggest problems. We didn't really get our creative players on the ball and as a result we got um, dominated by Northern Ireland. So we're really hopeful um, and expectant for a reaction and a much more positive performance tonight. You've got those two big home games to come at Walsall and Chesterfield. You'd love to go into them on the back of a, a good result. You've had some cracking tussles with Wales over the years and it should be a, a terrific game today. Yeah, we, we, you know, they're always um, tough encounters, uh, whether it's home or away. 
Um, and we, we obviously shared the shield last year with Wales, finishing on 10 points. And actually, it felt we were disappointed um, at Hensford last year because we were a much better side on the night. Um, but they managed to, to hold on for a 1 1 draw, and, and as we shared its results. So we feel, um, you know, we've got to go one step better. And as you rightly say, we're bottom of the table at the moment on, on zero points. So we need to get our campaign going. And the only way we can do that is with a win tonight. That's great, Luke. Uh, best of luck tonight. Great to hear from Luke Hampton and Mark Lloyd Williams there. Talk so well, don't they? They'll have the lads well prepared for this game. Brought to you live on the Channel 4 streaming app and the ESFA YouTube channel this evening. That's the league table then. What a start from Northern Ireland. Three wins out of three. They have already beaten England in their only fixture. Wales kicked off with a very impressive 4-2 success against Scotland so three points from the one game played and England hoping to climb the table could get themselves above Scotland and the Republic of Ireland with a win in this game here are the games to come we're looking forward to bringing you both remaining England fixtures and it's so exciting for the players to be playing at uh, League Two venue Walsall and then Chesterfield which has been promoted back to the Football League uh, in the second game uh, against Scotland in England uh, but Wales uh, will fancy this there's no question they go to Northern Ireland in their next game and then close out with a fixture against the Republic of Ireland and these two nations have great histories in the Centenary Shield they actually shared the first time it was ever played in 1973 and they shared the most recent playing uh, for this trophy last year both ending with 10 points from the games played last year they actually it was a, a, a winner takes all game really at Haddensford and it ended up 1-1 and they shared the trophy England dominated it in the 1980s uh, Wales though of late have had a really good time of things under Mark Lloyd Williams and just to give you some background uh, Luke Hampton He's in his final um, few uh, months as manager. Uh, he's hoping to close out. And Mark Lloyd Williams has a great pedigree as a former player, the Welsh Premier League's all time top scorer, with 319 goals in a glittering career of football in Wales. And now he's imparting his wisdom as a coach. Just a quick word on the change of venue. You might have been expecting this game from Britain Ferry that was the original idea but because of the weather uh, it's been moved here to Glandarcy Park Academy of Sport so hats off to everyone who's been involved uh, with the late change of venue here come the teams then first out Wales both managers making the two changes to their lineups for this game we will have the national anthems two wonderful anthems just to get them in um, in the mood uh, we'll have to have that confirmed actually but with the uh, change of venue whether that's possible but I'm sure they will be playing with pride and passion uh, representing their countries and looking to follow in the footsteps of former glories of course it's been um, as we alluded to there with Mark in the pre-match interview tough time for Wales football fans so close yet so far to Euro qualification losing in the penalty shootout to Poland of course they represented themselves magnificently just couldn't get over the line in the lot in the lottery of penalties but it's schoolboy football for you tonight Luke Hampton leading England and Mark Lloyd Williams in charge of Wales England wearing the white tops with the blue shorts and out onto the field of play wales looking to continue where they left off in dispatching scotland at granite morton with oshan evans playing tonight he scored a hat trick in that game so he's someone that england are going to have to watch england came up against a very good northern ireland side and lost by three goals to nil so hoping to pick up their first points and first goals of 
for this centenary shield campaign. Plenty of smiles on the faces, plenty of focus and determination as well as they line up for the pre-match rituals at the Llandasi Academy of Sport. It's Wales versus England. Great to have your company on this Thursday evening. Perfect way to start your long extended football Easter weekend with some Centenary Shield football. And this is a big moment for them as they line up, pulling on the national jersey. England had a very good uh, training camp at St George's Park a few weeks ago. And Wales have actually just won a tournament in Italy, the Roma Cup of Mundi tournament, winning that for the first time. So apologies for no anthems. That's because of the change of venue. Here's confirmation of the team news for Wales. And we brought you the England team earlier. Recap on that coming shortly. But Wales bringing in Cole Baker and Dylan Austin for Reese Wilson and Arin Walby for this one. So Nat Osborne in goal. The rest of the lineup, Bobby Ziwa. Abel Wanera, Josh Stevens, Ricky Lee Owen, Ellis Sage, Oshan Evans, hat trick hero from the first game, Cole Baker, Harry John the captain, Yian Owen, and Dylan Austin. Head coach Mark Lloyd Williams, we heard from a few minutes ago. As for England, two changes from their first game, the defeat to Northern Ireland as well. Kai Adams and Jack Matten getting. The nod from head coach Luke Hampton, so it's James Taylor in goal. He'll be absolutely buzzing, James, from his experience at Wembley, meeting Jordan Pickford and co. Fantastic for him. He's captaining the team as well. The outfield players, Archie Elston, Josh Thine, Deacon Smalley, James Sloan, Toby Nelson, Jude Entwistle, Aaron Cox, Makara McNulty, Hartnett, uh, Kai Adams and Jack Matten. So we're not too far from getting underway two sets of substitutes for Wales Lloyd Wright Rocco Dyer Daniel John Oliver Anderson Harry Thomas Reese Wilson and Arwin Walby who started the last game for England Archie Small Ashton Houlihan Ryan Johnson Charlie Wooding and Freddie Hayden the number 70 so here's the coin toss James Taylor Captain playing between the posts for England, Harry John, and they are uh, for Wales, and they have decided to swap. So changing ends, and we will be underway very shortly. And hats off to the ground staff who prepared the pitch. Plenty of rain in this part of the world, and we will be underway imminently in the. Centenary Shield 2024. The under 18 schoolboys of Wales and England going head to head. Both superb in last season's competition. It's Wales who hit the ground running in this year's affair. Great to have you, company. On the Channel 4 app and on the ESFA YouTube channel, live, exclusive, and uninterrupted as we watch the stars of tomorrow representing their countries. We are off and running in this Centenary Shield fixture at the Clandarcy Academy in a village near Neath, in the Neath Port Talbot County Borough of Wales. Wales with the early throw in Bobby Zewa back for Aaron Cox of Leicestershire and Rutland getting an early touch trying a give and go he's got Jude and whistle in the center as well a purposeful opening from England who well Luke was talking about that first game and what they could learn from it Josh Thine Newcastle fan trying to get something going there 
Harry John, the captain. Proud skipper against the Scots. Harry of Pembrokeshire College. Smashed forward by Osborne. He actually did play in Italy in the Roma Cup at Mundi tournament and played a starring role actually did Nat Osborne in that competition saving two penalties in a 4-2 shootout victory in the final against England had a really memorable time Mem many of the guys who were playing tonight were involved in that so that will have given them a real boost going into this particular tournament Dylan Austin that's uh, composed defending by Matten. One of two changes to the England team. And just feeling each other out. Of course, they did train here this morning. The players getting to grips with this venue. Taylor clatters clear. Matten again into the fold for England. Who's going to take the first opportunity of this game, I wonder? Both highly rated keepers. Might take something special to beat either Taylor or Osborne England dominated this competition in the 80s won it many times over the years Wales actually had a long spell without winning it won it in 1981 and then weren't victorious until 2022 and shared it with England last year 2023 so Mark Lloyd Williams has got them going here come England with a, an energetic attack, Archie Elsdon racing clear, his favourite player is uh, Kyle Walker so it would be quite something if you can have any sort of career resembling the England international, much decorated, good uh, figure to look up to playing in that position. So first corner of the game, one by the application of Elsdon and it's going to be swung over from this right hand side plenty of options in the box hoisted hopefully but good defending from Wales was there a foul there um, Matten forward for the set piece Bobby Zewa protesting his innocence was the header from Wanera initially but he showed good hunger there did Matten foul committed said the referee by Zewa so another set piece opportunity for England and once again on dead ball duty it's Toby Nelson on the pitch. On the pitch. Nelson Decided to play it with a low trajectory, trying to catch them out a little bit. I think that was deliberate from Nelson. And a Wales throw in. So, England just knocking at the door there. I think they'll be satisfied with how they've settled into the game. Makara McNulty partner getting things moving. Oh, and this is good from Wales, but solid defending from Elston, who's been involved in both halves of the pitch. Yian Owen of Bridge End trying to pick his pocket.
Thine with the throw. Nelson. It's competitive, it's tenacious, as you'd expect in a Wales-England fixture. And perhaps the away team will be a little bit happier, certainly with those two dead ball scenarios, scenarios rather, with Toby Nelson whipping over the right wing corner and then a free kick. Nothing came of them though. Wales will be satisfied with their resilience and organisation in repelling those threats. And now they've got a ball launched of their own. And here's Jude Entwistle. Good work by Entwistle. England's number nine gets the cross in. Stretching and straining was Toby Nelson. He just couldn't get there. So nearly the combination of Entwistle and Nelson coming up trumps for England. The number nine rolled it over. I think when he delivered that, he thought it was going to be pushed in. It took a bobble, didn't it? I think that's taken it away from Nelson. Excellent ball in. Just bounced a little bit higher than he thought. He did get a slight touch. And that is exasperating for Nelson, who's been prominent in these first eight minutes. We might have a Wales injury. So it's all happening. So, well, hopefully might be able to continue, but it doesn't look too good. It's Cole Baker, one of the players who came in. He just pulled up, and that's why Antwistle got away from him. It was Baker pulling up, and physio Andrew Thomas is out there to attend to him. He's in some distress, isn't he? And the suggestion is that his evening is going to be over. And he was a player who came into the fold for this game. He was one of the two changes with Dylan Austin coming in as well. The one relief for Wales is that it didn't lead to a goal as Nelson was unable to get on the end of Emerson's low centre. But hobbling off the pitch, Tough to take for Baker and Wales forced in to an early switch. It's good to see that from Nelson, just uh, his opposing play giving him some word, but yeah, he's in uh, considerable anguish. Here's Baker, headline maker for the wrong reasons. And let's hope that's nothing too serious. So Baker is off. And away by Osborne. Zua for Osborne again and now it's Wales's turn perhaps to do some damage Ellis Sage on the charge opposed by Thine Sage <clears throat> good low ball in kept alive well by Wales Harry John this is good from the man in red the boys in red Ricky Leo in but Wilson who's come on for Cole Baker so Wales will take some encouragement from that little attack led by Ellis Sage he was a scorer in that recent tournament we were talking about in Italy that Wales won in a game against Denmark when they were 1-0 down and Ended up winning the game 3-1. He'd love to get a goal tonight, and he might do so. He's in. Ellis Sage for Wales, and they have the lead just after the 11-minute mark. It's the Wales number 10 who raced forward with intent, and he knocks it past James Taylor, who's a fine keeper, but he couldn't get any sort of touch onto that one. It's a dream opening for Wales, looking to make it two wins out of two 
having got the better of Scotland in their first game. And Sage just slotted it calmly home. Got the run of the ball, competing there with Josh Thine. Well, might have just shoved him out of the way there, but I'm not sure he was able to deal with the physicality there of Alice Sage. Thine, well, it just bounced. He was focusing on the ball, perhaps wasn't focusing on the player behind him. And Sage showed persistence, showed strength, and then finishing ability. Wales with the tails up and the noses in front. And it's England who started the better. They had a couple of little glimmers from set pieces. Then they had the cross from and whistle that Nelson couldn't convert. He was unlucky with the bounce of the ball. Wales up the other end. Sage had really already taken the game by the scruff of the neck with a good run down the right. And when he had the opportunity, he gobbled it up. So England with it all to do here. Wales had that early lift. Obviously, it was tough to see Cole Baker go off injured, but he'll be very happy when he finds out about that goal. Here come England looking to get back on terms straight away. And they might just do it as the uh, whistle was blown, in fact. And whistle away, but may have just strayed offside. As the flag was raised and denied the chance to haul his team level. As, well, let's have a look here. Yep, got it right. Just strayed. Linesman had the perfect view. Ball played forward by Kai Adams. And whistle. His favourite player is Jack Grealish. I hope to show those type of skills in the course of this game. Did win uh, awards for cross country. In his uh, younger days, so uh, we'll have the uh, stamina in this competition for sure. But his team find themselves a goal in arrears, and it was Wales's Ellis Sage who knocked it calmly past James Taylor. by Adams and is trying to adapt to this surface as Nelson shrugged off the ball by Harry John and Yian Owen Owen with Elmston in close attendance Coming up to the quarter hour mark. Wales sitting pretty on a 1 0 lead. And they've worked the ball well for Bobby Zewer. Looking for number two. Good strike, but good positioning of the defender as well. It's Sage again. He's been irrepressible in the opening chapter of this one. It's Alice Sage, but here come England with Aaron Cox. Seeking to seize the initiative. It's a feisty affair already. Finish one apiece between these last two. Good to see uh, so many fans watching this game. The Starlets looking to shine under the lights of the Clandasi Academy. Smalley. Adams, good from England, Toby Nelson, Aaron Cox, still Cox, Thine making himself available, Cox, not sure if that was an intended shot but it took a deflection, they have got a corner kick, England have reacted well to suffering the setback of the deadlock breaker. Cox 
springing to life at Brookhouse College. Represents Leicestershire and Rutland County Schools FA. He's won his team a corner. Cavalry forward from the back. Toby Nelson again charged with the responsibility from the set piece. Is it going to be a Toby teaser? It's a good ball and it's onto the roof of the net. He worked his angles out well, did Nat Osborne. And nothing doing from that one for England, who did dominate the game when they last met at Haddonsford, finished 1 1. They shared the trophy. But they want to get themselves going really you look at Northern Ireland who were bottom last year they've won all three games they are favorites to win the trophy Wells have still got to play them and here they come again might be another one wonderful opportunity and it's number two and it's a second goal for Ellis Sage he's been unstoppable in the first 18 minutes of this game, he's doubled his team's advantage and Wales are flying in the Centenary Shield once again. Evans was the star in the first match with a hat-trick and Sage is just one short of a treble already. Opportunism from Evans in the build-up, this time He's got an assist, Sage took it in his stride and he's played it through the legs of James Taylor who has been powerless to stop the clinical start of Wales on this Thursday evening at the Flandarcy Academy. Drove it emphatically, decisively and it's Wales 2, England 0. And it's the Alice Sage show so far. England, you feel, are going to need the next goal in this game. A tough one for them to take. You have to give Evans, the 17-year-old from Carnarvon Town, some credit there. Because he threaded the pass. And Sage, given what happened, in the early part of the match, you just knew what the outcome was going to be. Good hoisted ball for Sage, who did so well to get that cross in. Space was running out for him, it's all Wales at the moment. Sage is absolutely having the time of his life. Scored two, got a cross over there sprinting after that lofted pass and now he's on a hat trick he's the star of the show past the 20 minute mark england have had their moments but sage with the two finishes corner kick for the welsh it's Dylan Austin to take. Austin. Oh, it's a decent header down, actually, from Abel Monera. Forward from the back. Fairly low trajectory. Headed it down, but no damage done. To the England rear guard. Make sure you stay tuned, by the way, at half-time. We've got um, video footage of the England under-18 schoolboys and the England under-15 schoolgirls at St George's Park in a training camp in February. Clearly worked for the girls, by the way. Today won the Bob Doherty tournament after a 1-1 draw with Scotland. They've beaten Republic of Ireland 2-1, drawn 1-1 with Northern Ireland, winning a penalty shootout for a bonus point in that. So well done to the under-15 schoolgirls of England we'll see them at that training camp at half time 
the girls beat Wales 6-0 in a friendly earlier in the month. Six different scorers, three in each half, but the under-18 boys are finding life much more difficult against Wales here, approaching the midway point of this first half. Desperate to get a foothold back in the contest. Wales, remember, forced into the early change. Cole Baker pulling up. Leading to an England chance, actually their best moment of the game, inadvertently. But he's been replaced by Rhys Wilson, who started the win over Scotland. But Wales certainly not struggling to score goals. Mark Lloyd-Williams, their manager, feels a real attachment to this competition after what he's achieved, and he's so well regarded in Welsh football. Free kick, uh, corner kick Wales, rather. Uh, Dylan Austin taking it. Owen trying to keep it alive, but going into the second quarter of the contest, Wales have that buffer of a two-goal lead. Pressure applied by Sage illegally on James Sloan. And, well, the body language says it all, doesn't it? From the England management team. Folded arms all round, nonplussed with what they've witnessed so far. Could argue uh, with the quality of the defending for both goals, really. Have to give Sage some credit for his persistence, his drive, his energy and his finishing ability, but slightly nervy defending. Cox trying to make things happen. And they've won another corner. They need to do something with one of these dead ball situations. Maybe it could be time for Toby Nelson to work his magic. Nelson with the left arm up, the right boot from the left wing. It's a good one into the near post. What a save that is. And then the follow up as well. It's a double chance. It's a triple chance in fact. Well, Kai Adams. Oh, and then it's on to the bar. Adams and Entwistle involved in the early opportunities. And then Toby Nelson with a brilliant effort from outside the box, curled it. And if Osborne's got a hand on to that, it's a superb sequence of saves from Nat Osborne between the posts for Wales. England can't believe they haven't got a goal there. First of all, the header from Adams. Then Entwistle with a double chance, standing firm was Nat Osborne. It came out for Toby Nelson, who's got a wand of a right foot. He got great curl on the ball, but have you seen a better string of saves from a youth keeper there than Nat Osborne? That was absolutely stellar from him. And if Wales do go on to, to win this game, you're going to look back at that because he's made three or four outstanding stops. The, the last one from the long ranger from Nelson may well have been the pick of the bunch. So that was, well, it's a highlights reel in the space of 30 seconds from Nat Osborne. Uh, well, I mean, we were talking about James Taylor, his opposite number, was the cross flies harmlessly wide, wide, but Taylor had such a great experience as a guest of Channel 4 at Wembley, meeting Jordan Pickford, Rob Green and the punditry team. But let's have a look at here from Osborne. First save there, then Entwistle, so that's two. Entwistle again, three effectively using his legs. And then this one from Toby Nelson, wide out. I think he did get a touch. Can't really tell from that angle. But from the other one, it did look like he uh, tipped it onto the bar. But that would have been a worldie from Nelson. I think when he hit that, he probably thought he'd scored. 
but um, yeah, that was um, quite something. So, well, the two headline makers so far for Wales. Alice Sage with the two goals, and then Nat Osborne, the keeper of uh, Pontadawi Town Academy. And we, we mentioned that he, he came into it with pedigree. He uh, saved a cu couple of penalties in a shootout as they won the Roma Cup at Mundi tournament in Italy. And they, they actually won that tournament on uh, St. David's Day. So a very uh, fitting day to win it. Won it for the first time, ninth, ninth time they'd entered and Osborne continuing his fine shot-stopping work. Agility, solidity and the ability to repel everything thrown at him there. All the chances coming in a flurry for England. For Adams, for Entwistle and then Toby Nelson with a delicious curled effort tipped onto the bar by Osborne 2-0 Wales but England have to take encouragement from the openings they've carved out hasn't been one way traffic by any means but the next goal will be crucial a few crumbs of comfort for Luke Hampton and co Luke assisted by Matt Atherton James Norton the goalkeeping coach but it's the goalkeeping coach of Wales Glenn Garner who will be absolutely thrilled with the work of his keeper Nat Osborne so far bring you the key moments from the first half during the interval make sure you stay tuned for that Mark Lloyd Williams would love to secure centenary shield glory for another year Wales winners on their own in 2022 shared it with England in 2023 oh that's a good trickery from Makara McNulty Hartnett just maneuver the ball shot drifted wide though from England's number 12 plays for Shifnal Town FC um, good to see so many fans who've made the journey remember a change in venue because of the weather but terrific work to get this game ahead initially scheduled for Britain Ferry but moving over to the Clandarcy Academy past the half hour mark kicked off at seven the hosts 2-0 to the good both goals scored impressively by Alice Sage Nelson and ball is claimed by Taylor who apart from the two efforts from Sage that have gone past him it's been Osborne who's caught the eye really in the other goal here come the English again and he's made a few good bursts doesn't he Archie Elsden Wales much the happier as things stand of course if they do want to 
win it again. They can't afford too many slip-ups with Northern Ireland already having won three out of three. Can fluctuate year to year, though. We have seen some exhilarating encounters over the years, and England, as they chase the game, I'd have to say the next hour of football is going to be compelling stuff, most likely. And it's with Harry John, who's a good technical player in the middle, stroking the passes. Bobby Zewa. Just a little stumble from Nelson. Harry John wanted it back, but Nelson intervenes. Cox enjoys the ball at his feet, running at the opposition. A bit of a tangle there involving Cox and Dylan Austin. And Wales get the decision. Application and endeavour from Cox for certain. You wouldn't say it's a comfortable lead. As that one's expertly ushered back by Jack Matten to his keeper, Taylor. Just couldn't get that. Great to hear Joe Cole confirming the coverage from his punditry position pitch side at Wembley for the England friendly draw with Belgium on Tuesday. Joe was uh, reminiscing about when he played for the England under 15 schoolboys at Wembley in front of 60,000 people against Germany. Enjoyed the picture of his Liam Gallagher style Barnet as well reminiscing nicely but it was great for James Taylor the England keeper to meet him and Alex Scott and Jules Breach and of course the two keepers Jordan Pickford the current England number one and Rob Green the former England keeper here come England now this could be the moment for them Cox and still Josh Thine Strong on the ball there. The two number threes, Thine and Zua. Locked in combat. Zua. Sharp feet. They did well in a difficult area there, did the Wales defence. And now here they come at the other end with Yian Owen. Owen. Brilliant work from the number 20. Took two. England players to deny him, and then he's sliding in, showing what the centenary shield means to the players. Really good little passage of play from Ian Owen. Into the final 10 minutes of the first half of this schoolboys centenary shield fixture. The second game of four for both nations. Didn't get the fortunate ricochet that time. Well, he's led the line with real hunger and desire as Entwistle for England. Did have a close range effort amid a flurry of opportunities a few minutes ago. But Matt Osborne foiled England's attacking intent. Remember, we're bringing you live streams on Channel 4 Streaming and the ESFA YouTube channel of England's two home games. Both played a uh, big stadium. Walsall, the Saddlers of League Two. Their stadium next Friday for a game against the Republic of Ireland and then the old enemy Scotland at Chesterfield. And there'll be a great buzz around the town of Chesterfield, of course. The Spyrites having just secured their return to the EFL.
so I'm sure the lads are relishing playing at those venues. Wales would love a third goal, but they're more than happy. With the scoreline as it stands. Dylan Austin. Generates good curl on the ball. Now it's Nelson for Deacon Smalley. Known to his teammates as Deco. Smalley, a Manchester United supporter. Here come Wales again. And it's Evans. Oh, he's unselfish. Oh, he thought he might go for goal there. He elected to square it for Yai and Owen. And now he might be regretting it. Owen unable to connect, but. Oshan Evans has been absolutely superb in this competition so far with his hat-trick in the first game. He's already got one assist for Alice Sage, this time away into the penalty area. Over went Sloan to try and deal with him. Attempted to square it for Yian Owen who flung himself at the ball with no success. Having to hang in there. And whistle going down. Thought he should have had a free kick. Nothing given by the man in the middle. You wouldn't say Wales have dominated the game, but they'll feel good value for the lead, and it's Alice Sage. For Evans, what a combination they've been. Evans cutting it back towards Sage. And it remains 2 0. I think we're going to get more goals in this one, though. Aaron Cox switches the play. But we uh, did really well, did Ty Adams to keep that one in. Excellent speed over the turf. Will the old cliche of 2 0 being a dangerous lead apply in this one? Wales will be thrilled to have got the insurance of the second goal, courtesy of the predatory instincts of Alice Sage. Hasn't quite happened for England. Still beggars belief how they didn't score when they had a series of chances for Adams, Entwistle and Nelson. We've had some heavy rainfall, but elements seem to be behaving themselves for now. This quaint venue. BP Clan Darcy. Away from Ant Whistle. But, yeah, plenty of pride and passion, or Hoyl as they call it in Wales. I am half Welsh, I know that. I hope my mum uh, isn't watching, because I probably mispronounced it. But uh, it's uh, been played in really good spirits, this game, so far. And England still believe they can get back into it, I'm sure, based on the opportunities they have had. But Wales, other than the two goals, have come close on a few occasions themselves. Adams up against Zua. And it's a goal kick. Oh, Kai Adams into the team for this one. Hoping to make his mark. Definitely just got the touch. It's over 
and Zua to deal with him. A wry grin on the face of Kai Adams. He's really um, looking forward to that game against Republic of Ireland at Walsall particularly. Won't have long to wait for that, but England want to go into it on the back of a good result. Of course, if they don't win this game, they won't be able to win the trophy with Northern Ireland already on nine points. But um, still, with the live coverage and playing at the big venues, a chance to showcase their skills. So there's something on every game, really, in the shield. Oh, that's a good ball over and didn't get the power he wanted. Sage, an opportunity to get a first half hat trick, but a fairly tame header in the end. And that was simple for Taylor to gather. Brilliant ball floated over. Sage met it, but didn't get the connection he desired. And it spanned through. But what a crossfield ball hoisted into the night sky. Just didn't get the neck muscles as he wanted and that's a, a routine stop for Taylor Osborne well if he is to keep a clean sheet he'll look back on that number of chances in quick succession that England had he kept them at bay and I'm sure he'll be Congratulated by his teammates in the changing rooms at half time. Evans, yes, he hasn't got a goal. He's done everything else so far, though. An assist. He's been a constant thorn in the England rear guard. From Menai Sport Academy. Ashan Evans. Fine. Taylor forced into a first time clearance. He actually got excellent distance on it. Brilliant chasing down by Kai Adams, who wins his team a corner. That's brilliant from both Taylor with the clear. He was under pressure with the clearance. He smashed it a long way forward. And Kai Adams is making things happen for England here. Final minute of the first 45, they've got a corner. Toby Nelson. Struck a brilliant shot against the bar earlier on. It's another corner kick for England. Last minute of the first half. Hits it towards the back post. Stretching for the ball was Entwistle. Just couldn't hook it back for a teammate. And it's been that sort of half for England. The nearly story. And what might have been again for Jude Entwistle. And, well, nothing like a good old-fashioned tying of the laces. Four minutes of added time. And Osborne no, no. would take the plaudits with Alice Sage with the goals. We did have the injury for Cole Baker. Obviously, two goals as well, contributing to the four mi additional minutes. Can England reduce the deficit in the remainder? They've explored every avenue. They've had their moments, but not a golden one. And foul throw allows Wales to have possession Reese Wilson the player who came on for Baker Yian Owen came close to scoring a third goal Owen again what's well, a crucial touch from Kai Adams but it's kept alive by Sage Sage Breathing down the neck of Josh Thine, who did enough to get it away. They've been busy, they've been energetic, they've been effervescent 
of the Wales forwards. Good work by Entwistle. Adams. It's an ambitious ball, and it's nearly a very good one. It is, in fact. What a delivery that was from Adams. Great creativity and execution as he knocked it on the diagonal there. It just ran through and away from Aaron Cox. Out came Nat Osborne, who hasn't put a foot wrong, or should we say hasn't put a glove wrong. He's been a real pillar, a rock between the posts. We'll bring you the main highlights and the goals at half-time, as well as those training camp videos from St George's Park of the England under-18 schoolboys and under-15 schoolgirls. Wales not hurrying to take this. Delighted with the scoreline. Will it be the half-time scoreline or do we have late drama perhaps? Sloan, towering defender. Possibly still sufficient time to get the ball deep inside the Wales half. Sloan. Gets it back. Another long ball attempt by Adams. Sliding in, disappointed with the decision. And that may well be the final action of the first 45. Zua. And there is the half time whistle. So far, so good for Wales. They lead by two goals to nil. Both of them scored by the number 10, Ellis Sage. He was given a helping hand by some uncertain defending, but he still dispatched his two opportunities with efficiency. And England have it all to do in the second half. They've had their chances. The best ones came very close to each other. But at the break at the Flandarsi Academy in Neath, it's Wales under 18 schoolboys 2, England 0. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. An early chance for England and Whistle. Has given an all action display, leading the line, peeled out wide, and it just bobbled away from Toby Nelson, who did everything but connect with the ball. That actually stemmed from Cole Baker pulling up. That allowed Ant Whistle to run through. Baker was subsequently substituted, getting the injury. But Wales took the lead, just pushed him out of the way, didn't he? Josh Stein couldn't deal with Ellis Sage and Sage found his way past James Taylor in the England goal shows what it means to him had a away by Sloan came towards Thine but he just pushed him away barged him used his strength and Ellis Sage also produced the goods with the finish delight for him despair for England then the second goal, how about this from Oshon Evans, manoeuvred the ball perfectly. First touch was good, the second was even better. From Ellis Sage, two for him, a brilliant display from him and set up magnificently by Oshon Evans, who was the hat-trick hero in the first game. This time he was unselfishly slotting it through for Sage, chief goal-getter of this fixture for Wales and it 
just gave them the cushion, put them into a comfort zone of a 2-0 win. But what about this from Nat Osborne? The first header from Kai Adams, then Entwistle with a double chance, repelled twice, came out for Toby Nelson, who tried his luck from range, and he's tipped it onto the bar. So I made that three, possibly four, fine save from Nat Osborne. And England just couldn't believe they hadn't scored there. Really good header, actually, wasn't it? Glanced on by Adams, and then Entwistle with a couple of moments. Good touch from Nelson, curled it, wrapped his foot round the ball. And Osborne was there to tip it onto the frame of the goal. Wales looking for a third. Oshan Evans played it over. He did get a touch, didn't he? The Iron Owen. But disappointed not to make it 3 0 to his country. Great ball forward from the back. Evans pursued it and it drifts wide. The England did attack with threat of their own. Cox played in, but a heavy touch and through for the keeper, Nat Osborne, will be very happy with his performance. And it's Wales who have the tails up and have a 2 0 lead. At the break, second half is coming up. In the meantime, we have a special treat for you. Video footage of the England under-18 schoolboys and uh, the England under-15 schoolgirls at St George's Park and a training camp in February. Found out the news, I was shopping and uh, I was with my mom, so I had to phone my dad. And he was really happy. And I was really happy. So I would have been with everyone at my school when I got selected for the squad and then it was very good news so straight away I just contacted my family and they were all happy for me as well. It was a funny one actually because at the time I was actually working. My dad actually came down obviously from my house and he's he congratulated when I got me when I got the news. I was out at the, my girlfriend's house when I found out the news and then uh, I obviously popped on a call with my family and uh, brought the news to them about it as well. It was a good day.
So I was actually on the way to football training and all my friends and my dad were sending me the Instagram. I was just so happy and I was so shocked. I was with my parents and um, they pulled it up on their phone and I was just really excited when I found out. I looked on the Instagram and then I screamed when I found out it was me. What the fuck I think the training sessions and the matches coming up will be very, very good. I'm most looking forward to playing with the rest of the squad. I'm most looking forward to training and getting to know everyone. The game was really good, really good opportunities to play for England. Meeting all the girls was really good and just playing with them was even better. Yeah, I thought the game was really good. We played really well as a team, even though we were only just like um, met each other in this training camp. And yeah, we worked well, we all showed what we could do and we got the win. Great to see that footage of what was a very useful training camp for the under-18 boys and the under-15 schoolgirls of England. Right then, 2-0 to Wales at half-time. Here are the results so far and the fixtures to come. England kicked off with a 3-0 defeat. Uh, then we had a one-all draw between the Republic of Ireland and Scotland before Northern Ireland picked up their second win over the Republic by two goals to one. Wales kicked off with a 4-2 victory over Scotland, crashing the goals in, Evans the start, and then Northern Ireland made it three out of three against the Scots. So brilliant from them so far. 2-0 at half-time here, the fixtures to come. England have a couple of home games against the Republic of Ireland and then against Scotland at Walsall and Chesterfield respectively. The league table, Northern Ireland leading the way with nine points, healthy goal difference as well. Wales, if they can pick up this win, will go up to six after two. England hoping to get themselves off the bottom. They would go above Scotland on goal difference if they can get a draw. But yeah, as things stand, it will only be Wales and Northern Ireland who can win unless England can uh, somehow turn this round. But it's going to take uh, a monumental effort for them. They've got the uh, proverbial mountain to climb. So yeah, it's uh, when Wales do play Northern Ireland, that's going to be an absolutely massive game in terms of winning the trophy and outcome 
England then. Wonder what was said by Luke Hampton and his staff at half time. Because you would feel that, uh, yeah, they'll want a response. They did play some good football at times. They know they're capable of turning the tide. As we have a look to see whether he's decided to make any changes. He's got good options on the bench as Luke Hampton with James Taylor in goal. The rest of the lineup Archie Elston, Josh Thine, Deacon Smalley, James Sloan, Ar James Sloan, Toby Nelson, Jude Antwistle, Aaron Cox, Makara, McNulty, Hartnett, and the two men who came in, Kai Adams and Jack Matten. The England subs, Archie Small, Ashton Houlihan. Ryan Johnson, Charlie Wooding, and Freddy Hayden. Wales were forced into a change in the first half with Rhys Wilson coming on for Cole Baker. Nat Osborne in goal has been brilliant. The rest of their lineup Bobby Zewa, Abel Monera. Stevens, Ricky Lee Owen, Alice Sage, the two goal hero, Oshon Evans, Wilson, who came on for the injured Baker. Ian Owen and Dylan Austin completing the lineup. The referee. We do have a change for England. Thought there might be one. Ashton Houlihan is on for Josh Thine. So Houlihan from Parkview School in Durham. Plays for Durham County Schools FA. He's a former bronze medal sprinter. So they'll be looking to use those skills, I'm sure. Favourite player, Paul Scott. So that's what a player he was in his time. So he gets his chance. The England number eight, Ashton Houlihan, on for Thine, who struggled to get to grips with Ellis Sage for one of the goals. So England hoping to. change things round. Not sure they can afford Taylor to be beaten again. And whistle. Yeah, the uh, referee, by the way, is Jordan Harmon, assisted by James Shields and Steph Davis. Fourth official, taking Richards. England in white and blue. Wales in their traditional red. Alice Sage with the goals, but the team trailing have introduced Houlihan for the second period. Great to have your company on the Channel 4 streaming service and the SFA on YouTube. And whistle trying to get onto that one and Toby Nelson who probably had their most memorable moment of the first half generating excellent curl and power on his long-range effort but it was tipped onto the bar by the flawless Osborne throw in for Jack Matten in fact it's uh, McNulty Hartner Antwistle making one of his peeling runs, but to no avail. And I'm sure Wales will be fully focused on not conceding early in this second half.
the two home games will be Luke Hampton's final ones in charge of England. Mark Lloyd-Williams is opposite number tonight, wanting to taste more centenary shield glory. But the onus is very much on England to try and get back in the game. And they've got the run of the ball here with Nelson. Aaron Cox. Good tackle. Well timed by Reese Wilson. Came off Cox. Just hasn't quite happened. He keeps putting himself into the positions. Shown the willingness. Uh, Reese Wilson has acquitted himself more than capably since entering the fray for the injured Cole Baker. If you've missed any of the crucial moments from the tail of the tape so far will bring you the goals and the highlights at the end of the game. Zewa. Evans and Co. more than happy as things stand. Driven away by Sloan. With Luke Hampton freshening things up with the introduction of Ashton Houlihan. He's still got the likes of Archie Small, Ryan Johnson, Charlie Wooding, and Freddie Hayden to call on if necessary. Fifth minute of the second half. edging forward they're not the type of team who are going to sit on a 2-0 lead we've already seen them create chances since getting the second goal one of them fell to the player on the ball here but he's lost out as guy and owen shepherded back by sloan for taylor Sloan, pride of Sunderland College. Cruncher of a challenge, setting up a possible England counter. Aaron Cox. Driving forward, Cox, it's a really good ball in as well for Ant Whistle, but over to meet him was Abel Winner, a good battle between those two. Here's Cox, looks the most likely to turn this one for England. Infield by McCauley Hartnett. And then Smalley for Cox again. McNulty Hartnett. And now Smalley. And the header flashes wide. Kai Adams has got into some good positions. And England posing the questions. They're just unable to find that golden touch. Good work again by the number 11, Aaron Cox. First ball was met by defender Monara rather than Entwistle. Cox kept it alive. And the cross fizzed in by Deacon Smalley. And Kai Adams flashed ahead. It was well wide in the end. But they just have to keep showing the patience and persistence. Will rewards come? Smalley. And Whistle. Unable to control, though. Nice little pivot by Harry John. And Bobby Zewa attempts to get it away. Adams. The flag hanging fairly limply, the corner flag. It's, uh, rainy, windy conditions earlier in this part of the country. Eighth minute of the second half at Flandarcy Academy. 
both goals for Wales, scored by Ellis Sage before the break. Away by Josh Stevens. Sloan, all six foot six of him. And that's, well, good idea, not the execution. Long pass for Cox, who's pacey, he's lively, but hasn't been able to conjure or create a crucial goal for England because they all believe if they can get one, really will change the whole complexion of the contest. England have been on top since the break. Wales, well, hoping to put a smile back on Welsh football after the pain of Euro penalty shootout failure in that playoff eliminator against Poland having done so well to dispatch Finland the seniors they just couldn't get past the poles the youngsters are doing well here though they're on the back foot but they'll feel that they're absorbing the pressure and Nat Osborne just allow, allows a few precious seconds to tick away Smashes it high, really good ball forward as well. The header from Evans, and he can't follow up as Sloan goes over. That was route one from Wales. Nat Osborne made those stunning saves in the first half. He nearly got an assist there. The ball bounced favorably. Brilliant work by the forward, opportunistic, but a good save by James Taylor. And James Sloan helped him out on the follow up. But that was brilliant, honest inspiring center forward play by Oshan Evans high ball from the keeper got the better of the defender but not the better of James Taylor here's the corner Wales wants another one and here is the shot from skipper Harry John trying to pick out the top corner but always too high and wide from Harry but a very proud captain of this Wales team is he gonna lead them to another maximum haul hoping to make it two wins out of two to keep the pressure on Northern Ireland at the top of the table well England will hope that's a little mini turning point Taylor save to thwart Oshan Evans who scores all different types of goals here come England again with Toby Nelson, Kai Adams, Bobby Zero away. They got through over 10 minutes, Wales of the second half, without giving England a route back in the game. Just hoping for a smidgen of something. Cox. Matten, McNulty Hartnett, uh, off comes Nils Osborne, off his goal line. Zewa, Nelson, tried to persuade the officials that the decision could go go the way of England but well, change of venue was supposed to be played at Britain Ferry but because of the weather moved to Flandarcy Dylan Austin punched away decisively by James Taylor raced off his goal line there judged the flight well the England number one but we had a bit of a collision there I think it's Evans who's down yeah his eyes were very much for the ball he wasn't bothered 
about anyone getting in his way as that came over with a good flight to it. Just having another look at this incident. Out came Taylor. Definitely got the ball, didn't he? And he went in between Sloan, his defender, and Oshin Evans, the Wales forward, who has done pretty much everything apart from add to his hat-trick in the first game in this match. He's been excellent. But Taylor, what he's had to do, has been efficient in this second half. Ninth minute, but a um, bit of a stoppage here as referee Harmon prepares to get us back underway. But I think, apart from Cross and the header from Evans, I think we might be having to make a change here. Yeah, England are actually making a change. Freddie Hayden is on. For Kai Adams, who actually had a header wide, had a pretty good game overall, but Freddie Hayden is on for him. Hayden of Bridgewater and Taunton College, representing Somerset Schools FA. And here come England now, and straight away, Hayden was hovering, hoping to get on the end of a... Nelson cross, but Nelson unable to inflict any damage. Did hit the bar with a stunning effort in the first half, tipped onto the crossbar. And just a few words of advice from Mark Lloyd Williams, who's seen it all in his time as a player and a coach at this level. Had a wonderful career, many, many clubs. Keeper might need some treatment here, possibly. Nat Osborne sitting on the turf. And yep, out comes physio Andrew Thomas. And an opportunity to get some messages across to the outfield players. Wales closing in on another victory. It would be a hard fought one. They passed the hour. Content with their evening's work under the lights. Sure, Osborne will be able to continue. So England made a couple of changes. They made one at the start of the half, didn't they? With Houlihan coming on as the spray comes out. And recently introduced Freddie Hayden. who's actually a Spurs fan, and his favourite player is Song Hyung Min, so we'll hope to provide some of that sort of trickery, that sort of impact. So we've had a little hiatus, and we can steal ourselves for the closing third of this contest. Great to have your company on the Channel 4 streaming services on the app, and also on ESFA. TV live on YouTube this evening. Wales hot favourites to get the win with a 2 0 advantage. Both goals in the first half from Alice Sage. Bobby Zewa tackled well by Nelson right in front of the official patrolling that far side. Taylor showing some urgency. It's England who need to get things moving. Determined not to suffer back-to-back -back defeats. Nelson with throw. And they're away now with Hayden, the sub. 
Hayden's done really well. Cox is in the middle, plays it back for Entwistle, and they are back in it. It's Jude Entwistle driving home emphatically. Game on. They've reduced the deficit. Entwistle was never going to miss. Freddie Hayden takes a lot of credit. Fresh off the bench with the assist. That was a brilliant attack from England down the left-hand side. Hayden was away there. Good work. Got to the byline. Check back. Show composure and patience. A good first touch by Entwistle. He deserves that goal. He's led the line with heart, with desire, with an impressive attitude and he found the finish when he needed it. This game is far from over. Wales two, England one. And you'd have to say an inspired substitution from Luke Hampton. As we can have another look at the goal. Hayden had only been on the field the matter of minutes rolled it back it's a lovely goal that actually really nice composure from Antwistle for Hayden what was good he got to the byline checked back just waited didn't hurry sl spotted and slotted for Antwistle so well really makes it a fascinating last half hour here goes the corner and absolutely essential for England not to concede straight away Wales piling on the pressure, responding well to conceding that goal. They've had one corner from the right-hand side and they're going to have another one from the left. Antwistle of Burnley College and Lancashire Schools FA. Apparently he likes to play darts, he certainly hit the bullseye there, did Antwistle. But it's end to end at the moment. Wales with the corner kick. England having to do some defending. Dylan Austin closed down well, took two of them. And whistle returning the compliment now for Freddie Hayden. What an impact he's made. That's what you want as a manager. You substitute to come on, be ready, raring to go, willing and able, and he's been exactly at that. Now it's McNulty Hartnett sweeping up. McNulty Hartnett of Telford, Tansmadley Academy. represented England schoolboys in hockey as well 66th minute Wales 2 England 1 Alice Sage with two for Wales in the first half but England roaring back through Antwistle and now it's Nelson but Ziwa fires it away and he's shown really good heart industry and effort levels to haul themselves back into this contest they knew they had to get the next goal and they did through sub Hayden setup for Jude Entwistle just edging some more the, towards the midway point of the second half Oh, it's a good ball forward, it could be another one now. Great save, Entwistle, while well, the flag had been raised, wouldn't have counted. Uh, but he applauds the idea, just slightly mistimed his run, did the scorer of the first. But he has um, just kept England interested. Whistle a few minutes ago, and Whistle absolutely buzzing after his goal. 
didn't quite get the run of the ball there. Arias reduced, and this one is intriguingly poised. And going into the last quarter. Might have uh, another stoppage. No shortage of commitment from either team, but he's uh, back onto his feet there, which is good to see. Josh Stevens, the Wales number six, Smalley, and now McNulty Hartnett. Menace down the right flank to Wales. Definitely got the momentum here of England. Well, they've got their first goal of this year's competition. Now they're in search of their first points. Nancy Hartner, little flick. Oh, and he just stabbed at that one, did Deacon Smalley. Nicely laid off for him. Nelson, they're playing with more of a swagger now, more of a strut, like a team who really believe they can get a result here, England. And it's Freddie Hayden who's done an awful lot to give them that belief, a real injection of confidence and competence off the bench. He actually, Kai Adams actually did really well before him, but Hayden has come on and caused major issues in the Wales rear guard. And the referee just needs to deal with something here. Has there been something in the Wales penalty area? We have had a few stoppages actually in this second half, so there's going to be plenty of additional time at the end of this one. Probably around at least 25 minutes playing time remains for England to try and get level, for Wales to try and get a third goal. And whistle. Deacon Smalley. Forward by Sloan. He's got to spot Roshan Evans and well Taylor takes some credit doesn't he in goal for coming out to deny Evans when it was 2-0 and here come England again and this time it runs away from Hayden just a little bit too eager he has put in a really good cameo and he'll hope there's more to come in the final 20 minutes plus additional time He's been fired up, Freddy. And some fabulous contributions from him, not least the run to the byline, the composure to then nudge it into the path of Entwistle trying to win the ball here. Remember, two more live streams to come on these channels of the England home games. So Staffordshire against the Republic of Ireland and then the following Friday the 12th at Chesterfield against Scotland. It's a drop ball here for Wales and away by Ricky Lee Owen. He's with the GCS South Wales Football Academy. And they're all absolutely Delighted to be wearing their country's colours, always special for young players. And they've done the country's proud so far. They've put on a fine fixture. Some entertaining stuff, some good quality stuff. Smalley for Taylor.
wonder if Jordan Pickford or Rob Green gave many tips when he met them during the week. Here come Wales again. Oh, and the flag was up. Ball in the back of the net from Oshin Evans. He knows what that feels like, having scored that hat-trick in the first game. But linesman had a perfect view of it. Just gone. Yeah, we can tell even from that angle that he was clearly offside. Oshin Evans had Wales' his best chance in his second half from a long pump forward by keeper Nat Osborne. Got there in front of the keeper, but Taylor made the save. Here come England now, looking for a leveller. They've shown they've got plenty of potential to score. Might have been a little touch in the box there, maybe a hint of a penalty claim. As the challenge went in on Antwistle. He's back to goal. Oh, and is this going to break for Hayden? No, he just about did enough there. Did Reese Wilson. Tenacious from Wales, and now Harry John for Alice Sage. Gets the shot away, flashing across the face of goal. Just needed a touch. Not sure whether he was going for glory or whether he was intending the cross there, but Alice Sage has been fairly quiet in the second half in comparison to the first. Rifle that low. It was a real turf trimmer. Evans and one or two others were in the box. The cramp is uh, coming in now, I think. It's been energy sapping for these young players on this playing surface but um, there shouldn't be a long pause but that was a good attack from Wales they know that a third goal should put this one to bed and they are going to go and get some more words of wisdom Wales are making a sub Arwin Wolby is poised to come onto the grass and he's replacing the skipper, Harry John. So, another switch. Walby, who did start the win over Scotland. Is this going to be another triumph for Wales? Or are England going to stage a famous comeback? So, fluids being restored. Vice soaked up. Well, so we're going to have a England sub, Archie Small, for Makara McNulty Hartnett. So, Small gets his chance. He attends Hartlepool Sixth Form College, represents Cleveland Schools FA from the northeast and he does support Newcastle that got him into football can Smalley make a large contribution and help his team get a second goal he's on for Makara McNulty Hartnett and well if he can have anything like the impact that Freddie Hayden's had then just maybe England are going to pick something up here. Is it going to be the quintessential game of two halves? Wales, 2-0 up at the break, looking good. England have really come back and they'll feel, given what they've created, it's a fair reflection of the game. It probably is, to be fair, Wales being 2-1 up. But England will believe with the chances they had in the first half, maybe they should be at least level. Here's the searching cross and had a down. Uh, might have been a flag there, and it's Freddie Hayden sowing the seeds of doubt again. And he's claiming a corner. I think he's getting it. Good ball over. Hayden has been tremendous. He really has. Toby Nelson. 
right wing, right boot. Oh, and Wales were able to get it away, but it's um, brilliantly situated this game. It really is. England really ticked all the boxes in terms of attitude in this second half, and they've shown the ability. Excellent from Jack Matten. Sliding in with the challenge. Dylan Austin, referee, had a good view of that. Uh, deciding not to enter too many names into the notebook. I'm not sure we've had a booking, have we? It's um, been played in good uh, spirits, hasn't it? Uh, the right level. No malice, just sheer honesty, sheer willingness to do themselves and the country proud. 79th minute, 2-1 Wales, England set piece. James Sloan was forward from the back there. Now it's Deacon Smalling. Away by the Welsh and then anywhere will do for Alice Sage. Back assisting the rear guard, the forward player. We're in Clan Darcy. That is actually the location of the first oil refinery in the UK. And the football's been pretty slick at times from both teams. I'm here all night, worryingly for you. Only 11 minutes plus stoppage time to go. So. Wales with a free kick. Just looking to relieve the pressure. England scored in a good spell for them, but are they gonna get themselves a point? I think before the game, England, having lost the first match, would have wanted a maximum, but they'd probably take a point if you offered it to them now, that's for certain. Well, the England management just saying, right, what have you got? Can you dig deep? Can you produce a second goal? Wales with Austin. And now Sage. Nelson and Whistle holding it up well. It's really got through some work. As Jude Ant whistle. Well, Sage has got a couple of goals. Can Ant whistle weigh in with a brace? Here's a shot! Oh, what a magnificent strike! That is truly sensational! A stunning third goal from Yian Owen. Take a bow. That is phenomenal. And if that is to clinch the win, well, worthy of winning any football match at any level. Yian Owen nearly scored in the first half. The header away by James Sloan. Wales got it back into the England half. He gathered it fairly deep, though, did Yian Owen. It seemed optimistic. I think he's got a touch on it, hasn't he? James Taylor, but he couldn't prevent it going past him off the underside of the bar. They always feel even more special, don't they, as a forward, when you strike the ball and it hits the underside of the bar and then goes in. That is simply stellar. 10 out of 10 from Yian Owen. He's illuminated this game with a, a moment of sheer individual brilliance. And it's, it's tough to take for England, it really is. They've got the wind knocked out of their sails by a rocket from Owen. Well, it's uh, right out 
the top draw, wasn't it? Shame for Freddie Hayden and co, because England have built up a head of steam. They look the more likely scorers of the next goal, and they will have believed they could even have gone on to win it, but it's a bitter pill to swallow. But there's nothing, I mean, yeah, I suppose they might say we could have closed him down better, but probably wouldn't have expected that level of quality. And really, let's have a look again. And I think this angle is going to really give an indication as to how well he struck it. Oh, it's moved in the air, hasn't it? And listen, James Taylor, we, we talked about in meeting Rob Green and Jordan Pickford. They wouldn't have saved that, would they? Uh, that is... You have to hold your hands up. I don't think... I mean, I've seen a lot of football this season, many different age ranges, many different levels of quality, and I don't think, I'm not sure I've seen a better strike than that. From y Yai and Owen. He's going to want the... Um, he's going to want the footage of this game, isn't he? And, yeah, we're going to have... A lot of stoppage time. It's been a more bitty second half. Not to say there hasn't been flashes of brilliance, as we've just seen with the Wales goal and the England goal was good. There's been some memorable stuff, and yeah, the crowd definitely enjoyed that strike. I'm not sure England fans watching this live stream will have enjoyed it, but uh, well, it was um, it was quite something from. Yeah, and whatever angle you watch it from, it's it's a piece of magic. It's just uh, the way he's just brought it in his stride. He did have a little bit of room, didn't he? But he was closed down. However, not quickly enough. And the technique, the pace, the power was a thing of beauty for Wales, a thing of horror for England. Double change, nice uh, environment for them, for them to come into, isn't it? You, you'd always rather be 3-1 up than 3-1 down when you come off the bench with five minutes to go. One of the Wales subs is Lloyd Wright. Good shift from Evans. He, was, he, he lived up to his pre-match billing, I thought. Gosh, and Evans. And so it's Lloyd Wright and it's also Daniel John who are onto the pitch. Well, England need another goal and fast to set up a frantic finale. Cox has never stopped running. Matten. Diagonal ball and frustrating for Archie Small. The sub who'd come forward. And time is running low now for England, who mounted something of a comeback bid through Jude Antwistle's goal from the lively subs. Set up Freddie Hayden. They've had other opportunities but looks like Nat Osborne the Wales keeper is going to be on the winning team bar something spectacular England have got the ability out there though to score a couple of goals here so this isn't over yet plenty of talking points on our live stream tonight you're more than welcome wherever you are in the world on the Channel 4 streaming services and on the ESFA YouTube channel. Well, Mark Lloyd Williams already looking at the watch. Cox can't get it moving, so he's gone up front as Daniel John. Fresh legs, looking to get Wales over the line. Yian Owen in a more advanced position as well, and 
Wales would be more than happy about that, given what he's just done. He's, uh, well, it's some way to restore your two-goal advantage, that, with a moment of absolute brilliance. Toby Nelson swings hopefully towards Cox who's going to gather this one after some unconvincing defending by Zewa but he did somewhat atone for his error slow for Smalley forced back though good hassling and harrying Working hard off the ball now, Wales, as they look to close this one out. Seven goals in the two games they've scored. Well, one was scored for them, actually, but apart from the Evans hat-trick in the first match against Scotland, the other was an OG. <laughs> Reese Wilson with the throw-in. Far from certain the outcome when the match was 2-1. They needed someone to take it by the scruff of the neck. That's exactly what Yian Owen did. Part of the Roma Cup at Monday tournament winning team. And he's going to be part of a winning team in this game. And the fourth official poised again. He's been uh, busy of late. Charlie Wooding. Coming on for some action. The fan down upper school. On for Smalley. Wooding a Liverpool fan. Uh, Stephen Gerrard is his favourite. Final minute then. Um, yeah, the next next action from fourth official Teggett Richards will be to tell us how much stoppage time we've got. I think we'll have a fair amount. We've had quite a few stoppages for injuries. Physios coming on and all the subs and obviously a couple of goals. So England have still just about got time. But it's looked eight minutes of added time. So, well, maybe just a little glimmer of hope for the team who trail by three goals to one. It's a free kick for Wales though. It's well delivered. Ricky Lee Owen. Followed by Cox. And fouled by Cox, says the linesman and Wales have got ex it exactly where they want it. Right by the corner flag. And they're just going to look to squeeze the life out of this game. Sage Ellis for Walby. Ellis, his two goals in the first half lit the touch paper for Wales. They were dominant then. England made life Awkward and difficult for them in the second half. Got the goal through Ant Whistle, but an absolute howitzer. A blockbuster of a goal from Yayan Owen. Looks to have settled the issue. Again, hoping for another. Wasn't able to get anything like the connection he did a few minutes ago. Aaron Cox. For James Sloan. It's a learning experience for all of these players, though. All part of their education. Through towards Hayden. 
looked like he was turning the game back towards England. But he's just snuffed them out, hasn't it? That mesmerising strike from Yaya Noe. Third minute of eight given. And Luke Hampton and co know they need something rather unlikely. Nelson. Effort there from Arwen Wolby. Easily gathered by Taylor. Who actually did well to get anything on the Owens effort. It was the faintest of touches though, didn't really change the trajectory of the ball. Sloan allows it to bounce for Taylor. Still going for it, England. Elston. Forward by Wooding for Hayden. Wooding held it up nicely for Amp Whistle. Good pressure this from England in the latter stages. Just over four minutes left of stoppage time. They need two goals. Was there a foul there on Hayden? No, says the ref. Much to the disappointment of the England players. Matten for Archie Small. Firmly through and whistle. Good defending. Should come through for Nat Osborne and does rapidly towards the ball there to foil Archie Small. England needed a goal from that attack just to make for a few twitchy final minutes for Wales. No free kick given there. The challenge on Hayden. Alice Sage. These two goals are going to prove crucial. He's got a few other contenders for player of the match though, but I think Mark Lloyd-Williams is going to look back on this as a job well done. He's got a real affinity with the Centenary Shield. And maybe Wales will be heading all the way to the top once again. Their game with Northern Ireland, you feel, is going to be the key one. But England still have lots to play for. Still great to get the competitive international football for these players. So hopefully that will lead to good crowds at Walsall and Chesterfield for their coming matches, which we'll be bringing you live. Elston, opposed by Reese Wilson. Not long to go now. As Wales back up their eye catching victory over the Scots by getting the better of England here. Haven't had it all their own way. But they'll certainly take the outcome. Away by Osborne. Vital saves he made in that first period. And make sure you stay tuned after the final whistle. We'll bring you the moments that have mattered in this centenary shield fixture. Under 18 international schoolboy football. Live on Channel 4 streaming services and ESFA TV. Into the final minute. Wilson. Still showing a lot of heart and desire 
England, even though they know this one's going against them. Away by Houlihan for Small and Cox. Good energy from him right throughout. Could be the final meaningful action. The fans have had lots to enjoy. <laughs> Got his boots very muddy there. Running over the edge of the pitch. Here come England looking for that second goal. Good block. Great defending there. And that's it. Wales with back-to-back -back victories as England suffer their second successive defeat. Mark Lloyd Williams' boys get the job done. A brace from Ellis Sage in the first period. Jude Entwistle got England back into it. But then the third goal, sensationally so, from Yian Owen, decorating this fixture with an absolutely astonishing hit to make it 3-1. And that means it's six points out of six for Oshan Evans and Wales. England still looking for their first points. They got their first goal, they played their part in a very entertaining contest as it finishes Wales 3, England 1. Let's have a look at the action from the game. Lots of highlights, lots of really good football. And we thoroughly enjoyed it. Here's the opening goal as sheer determination of Ellis Sage to brush away Josh Thine and then find a way past James Taylor. Early goal for Wales. Got them in the mood. Just settled them down in the contest. He barged Thine out of the way and Sage broke the deadlock. And his name was soon on the score sheet for a second time created by the excellence of Oshan Evans, who scored a hat-trick in the first game. This time he supplied the pass and that it was driven low and true, unerringly so, past James Taylor in the England goal. What a first half for Ellis Sage, collecting the pass from his fellow forward, taking a couple of touches and then smashing it into the back of the net. All smiles for Wales at that point. England came out impressively though in the second half. Really good stuff from them, particularly from the sub. Freddie Hayden got to the byline, waited, spotted Jude Entwistle, controlled it well and fired it into the net. Game on, 2-1, assist for Hayden the sub. Showed pace and quality. He still had a lot to do. He did really well to beat the defender. And then he threaded a perfect pass for Entwistle, who provided two significant touches. 2-1, in the balance, step forward, Yian Owen. This was quite simply breathtaking. Gather the ball, the Wales number 20, bit of space, hit it so, so sweetly. It swerved, it dipped. Taylor got a slight touch, but, well, that was brilliant from Yian Owen. 3-1, game over, and just a remarkable way to seal the victory. And talk about putting the uh, cherry on top of the icing, on top of the cake. Staggering. Almost uh, leaves you short of superlatives. Brilliant goal. Thanks for your company on the Channel 4 streaming services and on ESFA TV. Let's have a look at the results so far. As you can see, Wales, seven goals, 
two wins, England with two defeats. Northern Ireland have won all of their games. Looks to be a shootout between Northern Ireland and Wales, doesn't it? Northern Ireland on nine, Wales on six from two, so they've got a game in hand. England propping up the table, but hoping still to get above Scotland and Republic of Ireland, who they've still got to play in the last two games. Live streams to come from Walsall next Friday against Republic of Ireland for England, and then Scotland at Chesterfield the following Friday. Thanks for your company from me, Jack Woodward, signing off from the Flandarcy Academy. As it finishes in the Centenary Shield, Wales under 18 schoolboys three, England under 18 schoolboys one. Good night.